welcome to the Insomnia Project. Sit back, relax, and listen as we have a calm conversation. I'm your host, Marco Timpano. I'm Amanda Barker. Ooh, I just had a shiver. Oh my goodness, shiver. So Amanda, last week we talked about, or I should say a week before, we're behind a week, but we talked about the basement, but we're going to reserve the right to continue the basement conversation. Are people enjoying the basement? Well, I did get a message from one of our listeners who thought I told you to really slow down and calm down when you're talking about the basement. Oh, and too they, much so? Too much so. And they said they had a hashtag free Amanda Barker. Oh, no. Because they thought, Finally. <laughs> the, Thank you. <laughs> because they thought I was making you do that, but I wasn't at all. That was just something you I did. I was on. probably making you be more because I like a nice methodical tour of something to get me to sleep. In fact, you're often telling me to slow down and calm down on the podcast. I don't know about often. Well, from um, my from my um from your side of the booth over there. There I am. Yeah. So, our lilacs are blooming. They're blooming. And I wanted to say as well that we so in the fall, you, listeners, you might remember that I planted a bunch of tulips. And the color on the package was kind of pink, Mm -hmm. but they turned out to be yellow with peachy pink. They're, uh, they're, they're uh, like a, yeah, they're orangey salmon peachy color with yellow sort of stripes, I think, wouldn't you say? Other way around. They're predominantly yellow with these peachy pink uh, stripes, blushes on them, if you will. Anyways, Mm. we're really... I'm really happy about them. And two people stopped by while I was outside doing stuff in the garden and told me how beautiful my tulips were. So I was really happy about that. I heard a story Mm -hmm. tonight that I haven't shared with you. No. About our lilac tree. Really? Mm -hmm. Okay, tell me. So I love our lilac tree. It's one of my favorite things. I've talked about it on this program years before. And I had a moment to look at it because yeah, the the buds came very quickly, like a day or two ago, and now they're starting to bloom. And I noticed that they're really kind of blooming on one side and not so much on the other, but that was at night. So I have to look at it in the daytime, Okay, but that's how it looked to me tonight. So sure. I was looking at it. I took the garbage out. It's garbage night. So I took everything out and our neighbor, our lovely neighbor was out there doing the same thing. And she said, oh, I just love your lilacs. And I said, I love them too. They're one of my favorite things. And then I said, do you know Margaret, who used to live here? That's right. That Before I bought the house, a woman yeah, named Margaret lived here. And she said, I did know Margaret. Yes. And she said she bought that lilac tree when um, what is now in process to becoming a condo. Right. Prior to that was a grocery store. Which I loved. And prior to that, it was a different grocery store. Right. That's right. I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. So when it changed over from the independent grocery store to the chain grocery store, Mm -hmm. which is what I think happened, they were selling off a bunch of things. And one of the things they were selling were these lilac trees. Okay. And so the woman who lived here went and bought one and planted it in the front and it was a tiny, tiny, she said it was just a tiny little speck of a thing. And so she would tell her kids who were young at that point not to run across because they, she didn't think it would survive. Sure, her two sons who mm-hmm. were probably boisterous and of course. young. Well, they're, you know, they're grown up now and the tree is grown up now and it's huge. It reaches, it's past the second floor of this house. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe too big to be honest, but. I love it so much, so I haven't cut it back. It is a bit big because one of the branches sort of leans. And that's the one that's suddenly a plenty yes. with lilacs. It's really taken the helm of the lilacking. It's lilacking it up. Now, there are different kinds of lilacs. Like there's the purpley lilac, and then there's the pale bluey lilac. These are the dark purple for anyone who's trying to picture lilac. Is that your preferred lilac? It is, yeah. Over the bluey ones. I like the bluey ones too, but they seem a bit more delicate. I like ours. Ours is also very fragrant. And then she mentioned, and there was another one. Margaret planted another one in the back. That's right. And I said, yeah, that's true. I remember it. It never really did very well. It was too shady in the back. It didn't get enough light. What did we do with that? We replanted you, it. No, you 
uh, put it up on some free site. That's right. Maybe people, Facebook mm-hmm. Marketplace or something and said free lilac. Anybody who wants it. And you let a guy come and dig it up. That's right. I was like. Which is fine. I didn't know what to do with that lilac. And it was just withering in the back. And it was, you know, Amanda, now that you sort of give the history of the front lilac, it mm-hmm. makes sense because that back lilac seemed like a runty little yeah. thing. Yeah. And they both were just somehow that front one. Because it gets more light. I guess or the soil the conditions are right because there's other lilacs that don't do as well that get as much light on our street i don't know why ours some some there's some secret sauce that makes that lilac be i mean it's a massive tree now. it is a massive tree to the point where you're like are they going to chop it down because of the roots you know no one's going to chop down my lilac tree i uh, better not i hope not mm-hmm. um and I should say that we don't have a large garden in the front. We really don't. We really it, don't. We make we it talk sound. talk <laughs> about it like we have. I mean, we w- believe us when we say it's like maybe the size of this booth and you can only fit two people in this booth. It yeah. is teensy tiny. It's And it's also what I call a city garden. So yeah. we plant a lot. Mm -hmm. And you got to fight to thrive. Mm -hmm. I know it's no gardener in the world would say plant the way Marco and Amanda do, Mm -hmm. do, but we've planted. So I've planted crocuses Mm -hmm. because I love them because they're the first flowers that come up. Yeah. Then I've planted tulips. You really did. And and the tulips that we have that come up every year, the white ones, uh, those I planted the first year I was here. Yes. First year we were married. And then I took my mother's peonies and mm-hmm. I planted them. We have some irises. Mm-hmm. I actually just got an iris plant from a friend of ours, Linda, in Montreal. That was her mother's. And That's I knew right. her parents well. So I was really glad Where's to Where's that iris going? That iris is near the... F- and folks, we also have a fire hydrant in our garden. And this huge lilac tree. I mean, there's not much room. There's not much room. It's a crowded little patch. It's crowded. But and- people, just like the city, you just got to... Fight for your place. Hustle, flowers, hustle. And then our good friend Dale gave us hit, part of her grandmother's... Sedums. Sedums because... Well, her grandmother sold the house, so she took, she took the some sedum. of the sedums then, from the house. And then she had to, because they were doing work on her front patch, she gave us her sedum because they yeah. were going to they were gonna be destroyed by the city. Yeah. And so now we're caretakers. Ours got kind of destroyed by the city, too, because yeah. they, du- they dug everything up last year. Which... Which displaced all my tulips, yeah. and so they grew. It, it displaced everything. There's stuff coming up. We also have allium that's that's about to bloom. Have you not seen that? Yeah, and I you're pl- looking at me like, oh, well, because I also planted more allium last year. Well, it's a lot. I love allium. Amanda loves allium, and allium is a funny one because we say allium, but allium really just refers to garlic and onions. Like the word oh. allium refers to gar- like the garlic and onion family, mm-hmm. but allium. Pull like flowers are garlicky. I mean, they really are that look like garlic. Yeah, but it's called something the flower, the allium flower that you use ornamentally in your garden. Yeah, it's, is, I think, is, just referred to usually as allium. Okay. So it can mean a few things, but obviously sure. we're talking about the flowers, which are those big purple puff balls. So we have Dale's. Which I love. I love alliums. Dale's sedum, Dale's grandmother's sedum, yeah. my mother's peonies. Mm-hmm. Linda's mother's iris. Mm-hmm. Our, that was my stomach, sorry. Our tulips that we planted when we first got married. Yeah. We had tulips from Holland that got transplanted so many times that I don't know. They if didn't. They, uh, I don't know. They were little ones too, so they didn't. They didn't. We'll see if they, they ever, didn't make it through. Yeah, they didn't make it through. And I just planted a bunch of dahlias because you said you like dahlias. I love dahlias. And, you know, towards the end of the summer, I'm always like, oh, we really should have dahlias. Because what I love is. Always having something to look forward to in terms of blooming. Sure, because we're going to have the peonies in June. Yeah. We're in tulip season now. We are. And lilacs are coming. Uh Uh-huh. That's all the spring flowers, yeah. Allium's on its way. It is, yeah. That's going to be more of a June thing. It'll be before the peonies, but after the tulips. Mm -hmm. Um, What else do we have? There's a flower I'm not thinking of. We used to have mums that would come up. What I love is Amanda will take flowers that she's given, you know, when you're given potted flowers. Mm-hmm. And when the flowers are done blooming in the home, we plant them in this small patch garden. Yeah. <laughs> we plant those. We plant those and 
um, they will, they will, they will sometimes appear. We also have lilies, ditch lilies, as Dale oh, likes yeah, to call them. The lilies, I call them day lilies. She calls them ditch lilies. But in any event, those big, um, bright orange that don't last very long, bright yellow and bright orange lilies. Yeah, they come later in the those summer. Those are like a July. That's Meh. a solid July flower. As are the. Um, the sedums and also, um, what's the other one that we got from the cottage that have the purple, they're like a big plant and then the purple flowers, light purple flowers kind of poke up on top. They look like little bells. We have them at the cottage. We have them at the cottage. Hyacinths? <laughs> what are they called? Hyacinths? What, sorry, what? Hyacinths? No, we do have a hyacinth. Okay. That's one of those bulbs I planted and yeah. it got, it's a... Uh, it fighting for its will to live amongst the allium because the allium are very tall and the hyacinth is very short. They're and French, so that's they... the one that you cut and put in a, in a vase. Cause mm-hmm. I was like, I think it needs to be separated here, mm-hmm. but no. Um, uh, what are those things called? Purple hydrangeas. No, no, we, we have hydrangeas though. No, we don't. We do at the cottage. Oh, but I meant here. Yeah. Wow. You really came for me on that one. Well, because we don't have hydrangeas, because I saw hydrangeas. And our I was neighbor like, has hydrangeas. I was like, should we plant hydrangeas? But I just don't think our, our patch, Let's do it. Let's plant our patch can't support it. It can't support it. You know it. what? The flowers that are meant to come will come. We also have lemon balm that's growing. Mm-hmm. And uh, oh, I, what are those? I wonder the if the sage called? we what planted. What are those plants called? The sage will come back. Mm-hmm. What are those plants called? It's driving me crazy. It's a really uh, common plant and pansies no no violets it's, no it's do you know what i'm talking about because the purple I, I don't think you do if okay. you're saying pansies and violets it's up it's mostly a plant okay. and it's green mm-hmm. obviously and it if you can picture at the your mom pulls the tops off of oh, them yes of course she pulls ha, yeah them. Ha, hostas 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 yeah, hostas, yeah. Hostas, yeah. yeah. But sorry, what? Hostas? Hostas. Hi, hostas. Hostas. Yeah, hostas. hostas. Yeah, I love hostas. Well, They're we, more of a decorative plant that, that tend to bloom purple long flowers, which, yes, my mother, <laughs> you're, you're really painting my mother as a bad gardener, but she doesn't like the look no, of those. No, she's an excellent gardener. Yeah, she's a great gardener, actually. No. But she doesn't like those purple no, flowers. No, she doesn't like the purple flowers because so they're a little bit... Um, they're because t- hostas themselves, you think more of the leaves, those big right. green leaves, and mm-hmm. they bush out and they sure. really cover a lot of ground. And then the flowers are that's one of those plants where it's more about the leaves than the mm-hmm. flowers. The flowers kind of poke out and they're like little bell flowers, but they I don't mind them, but they're not, um, you know, it's it's no peony, that's for sure. Right, sure, sure. But sometimes we're, you know, you're just a hosta among the peonies, and that's what it is. I love hostas. You know, our good friend Anne. You love hostas? I do like hostas. I've always liked the look of them. I didn't know that. And it's you know who passionate. has beautiful hostas? I mean. Anne and Fi in Stratford, Ontario. Oh, yeah, they good do. friends of ours. Yeah. There's a hosta you that. You need lo- a lot of sun for hostas. They almost look purple. Oh, sorry. They almost look a blue. Mm-hmm. Blue. Yeah, yeah. And those are my favorite hostas. Yeah, they and do they've, have got, those, yeah. they've got a lot of them. I really, yeah. I really like. I, their garden. They have a, a little pond in the back with with koi fish. So I always go out with phi and we look at the, the koi. I have a question. Are koi fish the same as goldfish, like the common goldfish? Yes and no. What does that mean? They are a member of the goldfish family, but okay. they're fancy goldfish. So right. when what you're about ta- carp? Well, yes, carp, carp. Is part of that family too? No, but carp is kind of in that sort of same vein. You can have decorative or ornamental carp. Okay. But koi are their own thing, as best as I know. Ornamental carp. In fact. A fish can be ornamental? Well, they're they're ornamental in that, you know, you have them in the pond and they have beautiful colors and whatnot. Okay, but they're still a living being, part of an ecosystem. I will refer you and our listeners to the koi episode, which was done in season one, where I actually talk about koi with Phi, the gentleman I'm talking about right now. We love Phi. This is our koi episode. So if you are, want more information That's about way koi. Way back catalog. You go back nine years to the oh, koi oh episode. God, nine years, a way back playback, mm-hmm. a decade ago. I want to talk about a couple of things. All right. One, I'm going to give a tip because I know our listeners enjoy a good tip. Okay. 
And that is, I've had issues with squirrels in my garden eating my bulbs, Mm -hmm. especially my tulip bulbs. Mm -hmm. Nobody wants their bulbs eaten by a squirrel. No. All of this episode feels like a euphemism, by the way. Well, no, that's, yes. Uh, Take it with the grain of salt you need to. All of this. (laughs) Nobody wants their bulbs eaten by a squirrel, you know what I mean? So... I've tried everything to keep the squirrels away from my bulbs. I've put blood worm sauce on them. I've used. I'm sorry, what? Like you can get this like this mixture that's kind of like blood worm sauce. I, no, it's not blood worm. It's like blood. So- like like it's a it's a, a thing that smells like blood, so that keeps them away. Okay. Then I had like. I- it's a like a. It's like not a, a sauce. It's it's like a thing. Look it up if you want. You'll you'll get what blood I'm saying. Bloodworm sauce. No, it's not bloodworm sauce. I feed bloodworms to fish. That's what I used to do. But um, okay. you can have like a ornamental fish. Yeah, uh, to bait a fish. But don't take me off course here. So I've tried the blood. I've tried okay. using. The, so the tip is don't use bloodworm sauce. <laughs> I've tried to use chicken scat. Oh you goodness! Get it, you get in. The, I'm sorry. Where did you get that? It comes in a little box. In this house, you've done these things on our little patch of garden to keep the squirrels away. I don't ever remember a day where you came home from the market and went, "Hey, babe, I got some chicken scat to pull throw in the front." It comes like in a milk carton. What is and it's happening? Tried. This uh, are I, you hiding chicken scat from me? No, it didn't work, and it smelled really bad. Because that's one of the tenets of a marriage. <laughs> no, do not hide your chicken scat. So, I did all this for our tulips, and still the squirrels got to them. Our last year tulips. All of this has happened. No, in the because last I. Year? This is the tip I want to share. Okay, you, you you won't get me. Le- you won't let me get past the chicken scat. These are. All things I've never seen you do. That's why I'm a little bit taken aback. Yeah, because I do all this for our garden. On the sly. Yeah, not on the sly to keep a beautiful garden. I, yeah, but I haven't. I've never seen a, a grocery bill that had chicken scat and blood meal sauce. Okay, so <laughs> first of all, Amanda doesn't do very much in the garden in the front. I do all the work. What? Clearly, if you don't know that I'm doing now all this, now you're coming for me. No, I'm just. You're just. You're not letting me get past my tip. Okay, so. Well, listeners, I finally figured out what to do to save my tu- tulips, to salvage my tulips. When we cut our Christmas tree down, mm. I had extra branches. So I put those, I laid those branches needle side up. Okay. Onto where I planted the tulips. Right. So I planted the tulips, then I laid those branches needle side up so that they were too pinchy for the squirrels to go. And Is it, there a needle side down? Yeah. Okay. Pinch side up. So if you put them the other way. you They're and, flat? Well, just picture um, branches. If you put your hand on pine branches, if it feels a little prickly, that's the right way. M- my memory of pine branches is if you put it on either side, it's going to feel prickly. Like I don't remember a flat side and then a prickly side. It, to my understanding of how branches work. I think it depends on the pine. And I, I put it the pricklier side up is what okay. I did. Okay. In any event. It kept the squirrels away. One could also do this after they're done with their Christmas tree. They could chop it. Now, no, because you've got to plant your tulips before you're done. Well, with that was my tree. question. Okay. So, we did this in you did this in when December, January. I planted the tulips late November. Okay, and then I and had that's enough, when we got the tree because we also got branches to to make wreaths and stuff. So I, I had I had some branches already. So then I that that gave me the idea because I just planted the tulips mm-hmm. and I realized I had these I had an excess amount of branches mm-hmm. and so I laid them on the ground covering where I put the tulips and it wouldn't give access. You'd have to get through pr- right. prickly branches to so get through. So pine branches are a great way to protect your garden. Mm-hmm. But remember, you have to remove those branches early in the spring before your flowers come up. Right. And I did. I mean, otherwise you just have a branch garden. Nobody wants that. With blood meal sauce so and then chicken scat. We also planted beautiful begonias. We did. In our little pot. In a little pot. And the, the, well, we bought them. I don't know if we planted them. We bought them. Well, we bought them, and then I replanted the, into that little pot. Okay. Begonias are great. They're annual, so you're not gonna, they're not going to keep coming back, unlike the tulips and the dahlias and the allium. But 
They're great. They're like roses and they're hearty. They're kind of like a geranium meets a rose. They remind me of my grandmother and I fear that it's going to need more water this summer than I than I anticipate. How much do I have to water them? I think you're fine. I mean, that pot gets a lot of water. Every time it rains, it gets water. Mm-hmm. I think you're fine. I do. We've we've done pretty well with that little spot. So. I really love that front garden, I have to say. Wow, yeah, I guess. Yeah. I will post a video of our tulips that we described off the I top. I mean, they're gonna you're gonna just remember it's there's not much there. No, I have some that I took. uh, No, I just mean people, when you watch it, we're acting like we live in a palatial estate with a rose garden. Believe us when we say it's a sidewalk and a door and then the teensiest, tiniest little patch of land. I had some horrible roses in front of the uh, fire hydrant when I first moved here. Oh, really? I didn't know that. Yes. They were like whitish but they were never full roses mm-hmm. and they were they were it was very thorny the thing with ro- roses are so tricky and they don't do great in i don't know my mom always had roses and she does about the best you can do with them but as a kid we always had them and in massachusetts and they're always thorny and you got to do a lot of work to get one flower like we think of roses long stem roses that we buy I also think roses need the right climate to do anything yeah. great. Like they don't. There's a reason they do well in England, I yeah. think. Like we tend to have really bright and hot sun. And, you know, my mom has them in Florida. She does okay with that, which is insane that they would even grow at all in Florida because it's so hot. It's really quite impressive. Actually. She's, a good, she's an amazing gardener, mm-hmm. though. I want to say this, that we just... Uh, inherited a couple of uh, pothos plants. We did from a fabulous uh, actor who's moving to Calgary. And so we got all these beautiful pothoses. Pothi? What is plural <laughs> pothos? Pothoses? Pro- pothosius. And the really big one we got started to turn yellow. And I, I know. Got I'm really... not a, I, I feel like it doesn't like us. No, I think it just went through stress. I know, but I'm worried that's going to lose all the leaves. No, I'm going to really baby it. Okay. We're not to water it for a couple of weeks. Okay. Let it acclimatize. Let it, if you have a pothos. A couple of weeks? Yeah, a few weeks. Really? Yeah, two, uh-huh. two or three weeks. We're going to let it just chill. Okay. If you have pothos advice, let us know. Yeah, because we have not had luck with them. And apparently they're the ones you can, like I had a pothos in university. I remember that, you know, we just grow it and then make, it was like a border to the bathroom like it right. was like our bathroom decoration we just wound it around sure i want to know this that prayer plant which i don't think i'm going to be very good at taking care of looks really like it's enjoying itself here. i know it's funny that's supposed to be the the pothos is supposed to be the hardy sturdy can't kill it thing and it's immediately like showed up here and is like nope i'm out um so we're losing a lot of leaves off that and then the prayer plant which is supposed to be a very persnickety plant Looks very happy here. And not only that, I so I re I repotted the prayer plant and the, the pothos, and I left the prayer plant outside. And we had a torrential storm last night. Like a storm, like there are notable storms moving from Texas up mm. through Michigan, and then we got our version last night. So this is like a legit storm. It was a storm. It was like it, lightning, thunder, the whole nine yards. It was wonderful to fall asleep to. Yeah, it was lovely. But I said to Amanda, oh no, I left the prayer plant outside. And, and I you said, were like, well, I better pray. And you're like, it's not going to make it. Not with that. We could hear. Did like, I say that? You're like, the, the rain just sounds so hard. I mean, it sounded like if, if it makes it. And then this morning it looked great. It was like, ah, oh, welcome. That's what I wanted. It was really like... It, it was, wanted the drama. It wanted the drama. And now I put it in a spot <laughs> and uh, it looks happy. So we'll see what happens there. But that's our little journey. I feel like we're constantly talking about flowers and plants on this podcast. It's Listen, almost... Listen, we're not exciting people, but that's not why you're here. It's almost become a potting podcast. But... But we're not experts at all on we're, it. We're not. But I do... I, I think... This year and last year, I sort of fell in love with plants in our garden. Mm-hmm. And so that's what's been going on for me. I feel bad. I feel like we should get a house that has a really big, proper garden that you could love. No, should we too sell much work. This house? No, no, okay. not for a garden. 
Yeah. I'm happy with the little I'm happy with the little garden that I overcrowded. I like small things. Yeah. And uh you know our favorite design show um hometown um Aaron Napier it's uh, Aaron and Ben Napier if you don't follow them they're lovely um or they seem to be lovely and she said the other day we don't like big entertaining like they were you know designing a home for someone who does a lot of entertaining sure. and wanted a big kitchen and all this and she said we don't like that we like um you know six people we just want a kitchen table that seats six to eight people that's it for us and I think there's such a movement for people reclaiming small spaces and not needing the bigger and the best of everything, but sure. wanting, I saw something today that said, just normalize small. That's our life. Our, our home is small. Our garden is small. Mm -hmm. um, but our needs are few. That's true. Well, whatever you need, I hope it comes to you, including sleep. I hope you were able to listen to this particular episode where we went on about plants and flowers. And I hope you were able to sleep. And we'll see you next time. I'm Marco Timpano. I'm Amanda Barker, still wondering if there's remnants of chicken scat. In her garden. Or otherwise.